and welcome to Game Sack. We're talking about regional differences in games. It's pretty amazing looking at some of these games, what developers have changed to get them out of their country and soften them up for us, you know, Westerners yeah. who can't handle some of this stuff, I guess. I yeah, and some of the changes they made were just really, really weird. Yeah, weird changes, changes that really don't make any sense. Small to huge. There's a yeah, lot let's, of stuff. Let's just get right to it. Splatterhouse is a great game on the PC Engine. You play as a Jason Voorhees type character, but to be honest, I'd rather play Splatterhouse than watch any Friday the 13th movie. However, in the US for the TurboGrafx-16, they changed the mask for the main character Rick to be purple. They did this so that they wouldn't get in trouble with the movie studios. But they didn't stop there. They also removed all of the religious imagery from the game. This boss fight here is a good example. In the US version, he looks like a mad ball. Mad ball. But on the PC Engine, the boss is an upside down cross. This would have caused quite a stir with the do-gooder parents back then. And after you beat that boss, you end up at a chapel of sorts and hear some cool music. But on the TurboGrafx-16, it's just an empty room and as a result, the whole scene just seems kind of strange, especially with those candles floating in mid-air. Meanwhile, Splatterhouse 2 on the Genesis also saw a few changes. For one, it was called Splatterhouse Part 2 in Japan. The first and foremost change is that in Japan, the mask is more like it was in the original game, whereas in the US and European versions, it's more like a bony skull type of thing. In Japan, the game only has five continues, but the international version allows for unlimited continues with the password system. The Japanese one has a hidden stage select that was removed. Also, in the Japanese version, you start out with five hearts and you get two of them back after each stage, but in our version, you start out each stage with four hearts. I don't know, this game just doesn't quite have the same charm as the original no matter which version I play, but I do prefer the Japanese one. Mm. 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 Kid Dracula for the Game Boy is a really fun platformer. Luckily, the game made it out of Japan, so the rest of the civilized world was able to enjoy it. But with things the way they are, we didn't just get a translated version. A few things were changed, and for the better or for the worst, you decide. Firstly, as you boot up the Japanese game, you get an intro scene of a bat flying across the sky with what is clearly a Christian church in the background with a cross and a bell ringing. In the international release, you get the same intro, but the church is gone, replaced with an ordinary castle spire. The funny thing is that the bell is still clanging. So, as you're playing the game and you get to the first boss, you might notice something a little strange. If you're a Westerner like me, and you're playing the Japanese version, you might get a little creeped out as what you see is a ghost with what appears to be a swastika and a pointed hat. At first glance, you might think this is a member of the Ku Klux Klan or something, but it's really not. From what I understand, this symbol in Japan is called a manji, and it can signify different things depending on the direction that it faces. It's a Buddhist symbol, and it represents balance. It can mean love and mercy, or strength and intelligence. It's easy to see why the international version took this symbol completely out of the game and they even went as far as changing the sprite to having a rounded head instead of a pointed one. Finally, you can access the sound test in this game. The Japanese version displays the names of the songs while the international version just says BGM 1 through 16. Oh well, this is still a great game either way. Some of you may remember a game on the Genesis called Sonic the Hedgehog. Honestly, I think we're all pretty familiar with how this game turned out. And of course, the Japanese version is better. That's because it was released later and they had more time to button it up. Nearly every stage in the Japanese version features improved scrolling with more layers. For example, the clouds here in the Green Hill Zone don't scroll at all in the US version, but in the Japanese version, they do. Doesn't that just blow your mind? There's lots more layers of scrolling here in the Marble Zone, and a nice underwater line scrolling effect was added to the Labyrinth Zone. Speaking of this stage, in Zone 1 there's a shortcut that you can take if you press this button here and work your way back up to the top. You ride a platform across and take a different route to the exit. Unfortunately, if you do that, you can only get a grand total of 49 rings. However, in the Japanese version, they placed an extra ring right here along this alternate path. Grab it, and if you make it all the way to the end of the stage, you'll have a total of 50 rings. That means you can now enter the bonus stage and get a chance at one of those super sweet Chaos Emeralds which I honestly really never cared much about. The only stages that weren't touched are the Starlight Zone and Final Zones. 
I really wish they would have waited a few weeks and just finished the game up and given us the good version. Hell, I bet Sonic would have been fairly popular if they did that. Let's talk about some games in the Castlevania series. There's many examples of regional differences, but this time we'll be discussing three of the games. Let's start with Castlevania 2 for the Game Boy. Starting out with the sound test. I'm just gonna say from the start that I love the sound test and I think every game ever really should have a sound test. So the sound test in the Japanese version has every song title. It's in English too, which makes it really cool and easy to name when I'm putting these songs on my iPod. Yep, that's right. This is a kick-ass soundtrack and I want it on my iPod. It's kind of like Kid Dracula. The international version doesn't have the songs listed and just has the BGM tracks, boss tracks, and demo tracks. Not only is the sound test screen different, but there are a few gameplay elements that are different. Items that you can get from breaking hidden walls can be different, like here. I mean, why change a Castlevania pot roast to a heart? It makes no sense. The biggest change is in the sub weapons. The Japanese release has the Holy Cross while the international version has the axe. This is a big deal and it really changes how the game is played. Super Castlevania 4 on the Super Nintendo is all about religious themes. The Japanese version is rife with crosses as many stages have them. They made sure that all of these were removed from the international version and no resemblance to Christianity is portrayed. I am offended by this! Just kidding. But it's kind of weird that they were all removed. A few other changes that I noticed besides the crosses include the intro. In the Japanese version, the gravestone says Dracula on it whereas the international tombstone has unreadable text. The title also has dripping blood in the Japanese version where the international version doesn't. Stage 6-3 has naked topless statues in the Japanese version, while in the international release they're covered for our innocent little eyes. Stage 8 has pools of blood where the international version has green fluid. Does Nintendo or Konami really feel that this kind of stuff offends us? And finally, here's Castlevania 3 on the NES. This time around, all the crosses were left intact. Obviously, this game came out before Castlevania 4, so I guess the censors were a bit more lenient in the NES days. In the opening sequences, the cross in the Japanese version has radiating lines coming out of it, while the international version doesn't. That's kind of strange. Zombies in the first level of the Japanese versions have their arms on their sides, while the international version, they're out in front of them. They probably thought that holding their arms up made them more like monsters and less like people. Some of these creatures were changed completely like these little horned demons into the little imps in the international version. Also changes when you accept a new character you meet along the way, the handshake is done with different hands. Why the hell would they change that? Obviously, the biggest change is in the music. It's the same soundtrack for both games, but the Japanese version has a chip that enhances the sound by adding another three channels of audio. The international version doesn't have this chip, so they had to totally redo the music to fit within the confines of the NES. Take a listen to the difference. There are more changes than I've listed here, but these are a few of the bigger ones that I've seen. Ah, how I love me some Castlevania. Dynamite Heady on the Genesis had a lot of changes made when it came over from Japan. First and foremost, the Japanese version is much easier. I don't know why they made our version harder, but some of you suggested that it may have been because Sega didn't want rentals killing sales. I guess maybe people would have beaten the Japanese version in one night and never purchased the game? I don't know. Anyway, you start out with two continues in the Japanese version, and you start out with zero in the international version. It's also quicker and easier to earn extra continues in the Japanese version. The bosses are defeated in fewer hits, sometimes just half as many. If you're playing the Japanese version, you'll encounter a dialogue before each boss fight. This was removed altogether from our game, except for one or two instances. Some of the graphical changes are minor, like the addition of trademark symbols to Sega and Treasure logos. You gotta let everyone know that those are trademarked. Same goes for the Dynamite Heady Now On Sale sign here early in the game. 
Why is there a sign saying this? I'm already playing the game. Am I supposed to run out and get another one? Some bosses have been redesigned like this geisha looking character. The attacks are still the same though. I guess they just wanted to make it feel less Japanese. Also, this giant doll right here has become this giant robot. Personally, I like the doll better because it's creepier looking and the robot just really doesn't look like anything special. Even your life meter has changed. It's just a colored spotlight in Japan, but here we got a giant H that shrinks as you take damage. There's a lot of other minor graphical changes in stages as well. Most of the stages have also been renamed in the international release to be pulp culture puns. Yay. Overall, I'm not sure which one I like more. Maybe something right in the middle of the two extremes would be perfect. Both are still awesome games. Target, target. Final Fight for the Super Nintendo is another series that had some interesting changes made before it left Japan. Starting out, some of the characters have darker skin in the Japanese version compared to the international version. I'm guessing that maybe it's easier to get a bronze tan in Japan, and I don't know. Moving on, we have the boss of the first level. In Japan, he's named Damned, while the international version he's called Thrasher. I'll be damned if I can figure out why they changed that. You'll notice that the Japanese version has a couple of cute chicks named Poison Ivy and Roxy. Don't they look cute? Someone you'd want to bring home and meet your parents? Well, you don't have to worry about that because they were taken out of the international version. Instead, we get Sid and Billy as a consolation. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing it's not cool to beat up on women, so the sprites were changed so you don't have to feel bad. And finally, when you're using the knife as a weapon, the Japanese version has a blood spurt when you make a hit. The international one has a spark or something that just doesn't look like it would look when you get stabbed. So how about Final Fight 2? This one has pretty much more of the same kind of stuff where the Japanese version had women and the international one didn't. Also, the first boss in the Japanese one has a huge knife while our release has the knife taken out. The funny thing is though that they kept the sound effect of the knife slash. Hmm. There are a few notable background changes as well, like writing on the walls. Even a peace sign was removed from the Japanese version. What is up with that? I want peace. Well, after I kill these guys then I want peace. Okay, screw peace. I'm glad they took it out now. Bring on the thugs for me to kill. Alright, well there you have a few changes. I mean, some of them I think were pretty necessary. Oh, really. like like the kid Dracula? Yeah, I mean, didn't you think that might be a KKK member or something? Yeah, I, I, could, I could see how that could a be a mistake. swastika and a pointy, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, just maybe. A maybe little bit. slightly, so. Anyway, we've got a lot more weird and interesting changes mm -hmm. to show you, so let's get right back to it. Sometimes little or insignificant changes will be made for reasons that I just can't figure out, like in Batman for the Genesis here. This is a great game, and like always, there's tiny changes to the title screen. No big deal. But once we get to stage three, we'll see these platforms with spikes on the bottom. Notice the nice transparent shadow that it has. In the US and European version, they colored the shadows solid black. Why would they do that? The transparency looks so much nicer. I mean, why would anyone even think to change such a thing? Speaking of transparent shadows, once you get to stage 5 in the Japanese version, part of the stage is covered by a very large shadow in the middle where everything gets darker. This doesn't seem to be in our version for some weird reason. I never even knew about these changes until recently because I've always had the Japanese version almost since it was released there. But recently I played the US version at my friend Bill's and I was like, hey, something's different here. It's still an awesome game with great music either way. Another minor change happens in Fantasy Star 2 on the Genesis. Normally, the music sounds like this. But in Japan, they use different and much louder drum samples, and they got this. They definitely fixed that for the international releases for a reason. Or how about Phantasy Star 3, also on the Genesis? As you walk around, you get into battles just like you'd expect. 
But see those scrolling clouds? Kind of a nice effect. However, in the Japanese version, it's a bit more crazy. That's right, even the ground scrolls, not just the clouds. Weird little changes like these always fascinate me. Blaster Master on the NES had a particularly odd change. In Japan, it's called Cho Wakusei Senki Metafight. It doesn't do anything if you let it sit at the title screen until you press start. But the US version added a story about a boy and his radioactive frog for whatever messed up reason. The launch of your vehicle at the beginning of the game is also different. However, gameplay-wise, both versions are identical, except for part of the fourth level, which was removed from the US version. I guess it was just too hard for us to handle. Contra on the NES is another example where the Japanese version is the best. It's quite obvious to me that Konami loves Japan the most and put the most effort into the Japanese releases of their games. Right from the beginning of the Japanese version, you're treated to a cutscene with a storyline. Then there's a map depicting every stage of the game. I freaking love map screens! After you beat each level, a small cutscene with some more text pops up followed by the map screen displaying your current mission. The best feature of the Japanese version is that levels 1, 5, and 8 all have motion in the background. Level 1 has palm trees swaying in the breeze. Well, probably not a breeze, it looks more like a mild gale. Level 5 has pine trees blowing in the wind and snow that's falling from the sky. And level 8 has a background and floor that are both alive and squirming. The US version has none of this. No maps, no cutscenes, no animated backgrounds. Thanks, Konami! The European release of Contra is the same as the US, except for they called it Probotector and everything's a robot. There's not one single living person in the Euro version. I'm not sure I like that. Firstly, the name, to me, just sounds strange. Probotector. Yeah, I don't like that. It makes it sound like I'm protecting professional hobos. Then the whole robot thing just doesn't excite me. When I see a person in the Japanese and US versions, I wonder what their name is and if they're fighting on their own free will or if they were forced to fight by Red Falcon. A robot is just programmed to fight and has no moral value, so I don't have any feelings for them like a human. Another strange change that doesn't make sense is at the end of the game. The US and Japanese version have a helicopter that carries away your warriors, while the Euro version has a fighter jet. Why the change here? There's no reason for it. Contra Hardcore on the Genesis is a fantastic game. It's very appropriately named as it's pretty damned hard and absolutely insane. But in Japan, the game is called Contra the Hardcore, as you can clearly see here, and it's much easier. That's because you actually have a friggin' life bar. You can take three hits before you lose a life. That makes this version about three times easier, but it's still tough. 30 life code in the first Contra not enough? Well, how about this 70 life code? There's even a level select. The US and European versions do not have these codes. The Japanese one lets you continue indefinitely, whereas you only get five continues in the US release. Even if you've never played Contra before, you'll probably be able to get a few stages into the Japanese version before you lose all of your lives. We don't need any of that silliness over here, I guess. And as always, the European version replaced the humans with robots, and this one is called Probotector, just like the first game. This also has the one-hit deaths of the US release. And of course, it runs slower when you play it on PAL hardware. And if you're doing that, your screen is going to be kind of squished like this since PAL has more vertical resolution. Sometimes even the music was slowed down. Yep, it's true, PAL gamers definitely had it rough. Stick with the US version unless you want things a little easier, then import a copy from Japan. a couple of more games with small changes that are interesting. First up is Bionic Commando on the NES. This is a good example of a company thinking they know what's best for you, and me. Overall, the game is very similar from the Japanese version to the international version. Actually, the Japanese version seems a bit harder as there are more enemies around each level. But the difference that I'm actually trying to show is this. Internationally, we know the game is Bionic Commando. In Japan, it's called Hitler no Fukatsu. Once you boot up the game and watch the opening cinema, you can see it right away. The Japanese version has swastikas all over the place and for good reason. You're trying to rescue one of your soldiers called Super Joe from the Nazis. The international version has no signs of swastikas anywhere. 
It's interesting because in the US instruction manual, the story kind of hints that it's the Nazis you're going up against. It says that in 1980X, we found the Nazis' top secret material called the Albatross. So I'm not sure if it's Capcom or Nintendo who decided that we couldn't handle a storyline about Nazis and images about swastikas. I'd have to guess that it was Nintendo since they had such tight control over the NES back then. Here's Salamander for the Famicom. Notice how nice and cool the title screen looks as it appears you're flying through a star field and then a cool fireball comes looping through the title with sound effect and everything. Now here's the title screen for our version called Life Force. Look how dull it looks in comparison. No animation, no star field, and no cool sound effect. Just a static screen with the title. Even though the power-ups are the same in both games, the appearance has been changed. In Salamander, it more resembles Konami's other shooters where you have several boxes with the name of each power-up inside the box. In the international version, you have a row of small solid boxes, and at the very end you have a bigger box telling you what power-up is currently available. I'm not sure why the change, but if I had to wager a guess, I would think that Konami was trying to clean up the screen and make it look nicer. Well, I'm not sold, as I'd rather have all the power-ups listed and then the one available highlighted. Decap Attack on the Genesis is a fantastic game, but you may not know about the Japanese original which was called Magical Hat Flying Turbo Adventure. The characters here are based on an anime series. The actual game is based on Psycho Fox for the Master System and that one's based on Kid Cool for the NES. Each and every one of these was programmed by Vic Tokai. This series just got better and better with each new game. Anyway, on the surface Decap Attack seems like an almost entirely different game. In Magical Hat, you punch with your fist and collect an egg friend which you throw as an extra attack. In Decap Attack, you punch with the face in your gut and collect a skull head which you can throw. First things first, the most obvious change are the graphics. They're really colorful and cute in Magical Hat, but dark, gloomy, and downright scary in Decap Attack. Almost every single graphical detail has been altered, even if only slightly. Which look you prefer is obviously a matter of personal taste. I'm sure some people prefer the bright, cartoony look of Magical Hat, but I like the way Decap Attack looks much more. The music and sound have also been completely redone. In Magical Hat, it's pretty average, absolutely nothing special at all, and honestly, it's kind of boring. In Decap Attack, the music is much more exciting, and there's a lot more of it. There's some great bass lines in a few of the tracks, and the sound effects are also much more lively. As far as gameplay goes, they're both pretty much the same with a few exceptions. The stage layout has been changed in many stages, while in some it's almost exactly the same. Each stage is comparatively similar though. By that I mean if you're working your way up to the top in stage 1-2 in Magical Hat, you'll go the same way in stage 1-2 in Decap Attack even though things may be placed differently. The special items that you use in each game grant you the same powers though their icons are different. The bosses are all different, but their attacks are generally similar. There are items in the third area of each stage that must be found in order to exit the level, and these are often placed in different parts of the stage in each game, though sometimes they're placed in the exact same spot. There are bonus rounds after each and every round in Magical Hat, but only after you defeat a boss in Decap Attack. Honestly, this is an improvement in my book, as the bonus stages always seem to drag down the pace in Magical Hat. Magical Hat is the much harder game because you die in a single hit. Having your egg friend grants you an extra hit. In Decap Attack you have hearts and you can earn up to four of them. Each heart takes two hits before it goes away. Now don't think for a second that Decap Attack is a pushover because it isn't. It's actually easier to earn extra lives in Magical Hat, but that's because it's also easier to die. Overall it feels to me like the programmers, artists, and musicians all had a lot more fun making Decap Attack than they did Magical Hat. I'm really glad that North America and Europe too got the far better version of the game. Pen 
penalty pun, or as the rest of the world knows it, Tetris Attack had quite a lot done to it when it left Japan. The Japanese release of the game stars a fairy called Lip and a bunch of other fairies. I've never heard of Lip or her friends, and that's probably why Nintendo made a complete overhaul of the characters for Tetris Attack. When the game ventured overseas, all the fairies were out, and the cast of Yoshi's Island was in. This was a smart move, as Yoshi was a sensation at the time, and people really loved him. And they still do! So, besides the new characters, all the backgrounds were changed to resemble the new characters. The music in the title was changed for the international version, but all the other music in the game was left exactly the same. Maybe the final boss music is different, but I'm not good enough to make it quite that far. I'm glad that Nintendo made the overhaul of Panel de Pan, and I feel that we actually got the better version over here. I think I like the cast of Yoshi's Island better than these fairy girls, and I'm pretty sure some of you will disagree. Either way, it was really interesting seeing the changes that they made. Alright, there's a handful of games that have some interesting regional changes, I suppose. Oh yeah, definitely. And as you've seen, some of them are completely necessary, while others are just like, well, why? What's the point of that? Yeah, like the shadows in yeah, Batman. Batman. I mean, yeah. it's a shadow, for Pete's sake. Yeah. Well, you guys have played a lot of games, maybe from Japan over to uh, wherever you live, <laughs> and um, there's probably regional differences that you know of that we haven't seen, so we'd really like to see some of those. Yeah, let us know, and in the meantime, thank you for watching Game Set. Dave, everyone knows what GameSack is like in English, right? Oh, of course. We are humongously popular here, and everybody's seen our show. Everybody. But not everyone knows the regional differences in GameSack, like, mm -hmm. say, the, the version of GameSack that we export to Japan. That's true. That is a huge regional difference. I mean, that's something we really need to show these people. Let's show you the regional differences. Here's what GameSack looks like in Japan. そして私は任天堂のファンです。ははははは、任天堂は2。ははははは、長谷川フンです。このエピソードでは悪いゲームについて話しています。米国で行われたゲーム。ああ、今までにこれらのゲームをプレイしたくない。おお。ひ、弱